The reproductive system, our learning intention, I will understand how the reproductive system functions to maintain a healthy body. The reproductive system produces and transports egg and sperm cells and nurtures the developing offspring. In this diagram, we're looking at the reproductive system and its role in the production of egg and sperm cells. On the left, we have the male reproductive system. Sperm are made in these sections here called the testes. The testes are held outside the body in a sack of skin called the scrotum. And it's important that they're held outside the body because the best temperature for sperm development is lower than body temperature. So our normal body temperature is about 37, but sperm are produced at the best uh, optimally at about 34 to 35 degrees centi centigrade. When the sperm are produced, they are stored in the epididymis, which is this little um, wiggly tube here. And during ejaculation, they will be passed uh, through the vas deferens, past a couple of glands that will release uh, secretions into the sperm to turn it into semen, and then the sperm is ejaculated through the urethra, which runs down the centre of the penis. In the female reproductive system, we have the production of egg cells. Egg cells are produced in the ovaries, and there are two ovaries, one on either side of the uterus, and they're connected to the uterus by tubes called fallopian tubes or oviducts. The baby will develop inside the uterus and the outside world is accessed through the cervix, through the vagina, and then this would be the outside world here. In these diagrams we're going to look at how the sperm gets from the testes where it's produced to where it will meet an egg and fertilize an egg. So starting off on the left in diagram A, we're looking now at a side view of both of these reproductive systems. So we have um, sperm produced in the testes and they are passed through to the epididymis, which is a little coiled tube on the side of the testes where they are stored. And they mature here for up to two weeks. And during ejaculation, there is rapid transit up this tube called the vas deferens, which loops around the back of the bladder via the seminal vesicle where there's fluid added to the sperm, via the prostate gland where there's more uh, fluid added to the sperm, and then rapidly released through the urethra out into the vagina, which is where the sperm will be deposited uh, beside the cervix, which is the entrance to the uterus. Um, at this point, there'll be 10 to the power of 7. That's um, a huge number of sperm being uh, released here. And you'll notice that that number falls as we move through the system. So the sperm are released here. They swim up through the cervix, through the uterus, and then they enter one of two fallopian tubes or oviducts. Um, the sperm are attracted to the correct oviduct by chemical signals. So they will move up through that um, with a combination of swimming and also contractions of the uh, tube walls. And it's at about here that they will meet the egg. And the egg will have been released by the ovary and the sperm will crowd around the egg and one of them will penetrate through the cytoplasm um, into the cytoplasm of the egg through the cell membrane and fertilize the egg. So let's have a look at that process in a little more detail. So the egg um, has been released here from the ovary and there you'll see it meets the sperm at, in the sort of first third of the fallopian tube and that's where fertilization takes place. And now we have a developing embryo. So let's have a look at how the reproductive system transports the embryo to where it's going to be nurtured for growth and so that we can have a baby 
at the end of nine months. So the first thing that happens after fertilization is it's become a zygote, which is the name of a fertilized egg, and it divides into two. And then it keeps dividing. After several hours, you've actually got a ball of cells formed. And this turns into um, a blastocyst, which is sort of um, a hollow ball, uh, which is now called an embryo. And the embryo then travels into the uterus and, and sinks into the lining of the uterus wall and you can see a black area here. This is where the placenta is starting to form because that's going to nurture uh, the developing embryo with what it needs uh, to stay alive. So let's just remind ourselves of what cells need to stay alive. We need to have certain things provided to the cell, oxygen, water and nutrients. And we need to make sure that the wastes that might become toxic are removed, so carbon dioxide and other wastes that we have thought about um, over this term. So for a developing fetus inside the womb, what we've got happening here is the uh, baby is developing inside um, an amniotic sac, which is filled with amniotic fluid that helps to protect the baby from mechanical damage. But how does it receive the nutrients and get rid of the waste that it needs when it doesn't have access to the air? Well, the umbilical cord here is connecting the baby to the placenta. The placenta is where blood vessels from baby and blood vessels from mum come really close together, but they never actually mix blood. But that allows materials like oxygen, glucose, carbon dioxide, and other wastes to move between the two different bloods and therefore all the needs of the baby can be met um, providing it with oxygen and other nutrients and all the waste can be removed without actually uh, compromising the baby so the baby can grow and mum will take on the extra strain of providing those extra nutrients and oxygen and removing those extra wastes during pregnancy.